All right, what up, yo? It's the Rap Throwback. What up? How's it going, Diz? It's going all right, man. Took a week off, but we back in the house. Yeah, man. Had a couple of things come up, man, but no yeah. bad. And, uh, Holidays you know, and shit, man. Holidays. November, December come up. People getting sick and all kinds of shit. But uh, we're back. We're back. And uh, we got Daz Dillinger's Raw yeah. album to go over here. Um, took me a while to decide on which Daz album I wanted to do, but I thought Raw was a good one. You know, it's his uh, first album off of Death Row. Like yeah. Before Daz went independent. Uh, and there's a lot of Death Row elements to the album, so uh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's not as polished as a lot of his other stuff, as far as the music quality or production or mastering, I guess. But still solid, man. Very solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, geez, this came out in 2000, huh? Came out in 2000, yeah. This thing's 21 years old. That's crazy. Yeah. Daz is 21 years younger on, on that album cover. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. And interesting album cover. I mean, it's just a picture of his face with the shirt off. I always wondered why he chose that cover you know right. the way it went that direction because it's like there's nothing fancy about it Mm-mm, just very generic very generic even the font the everything about it is just kind of like it, it's like a bootleg right right um and then let's see what else there is some album art that i'm gonna try to pull up here uh and there wasn't much to it like i have this cd yeah um see if I can pull up the album art but um, this is kind of uh, the beginning of Daz's independent um, venture I guess um, this is back when he had the forum yeah the, the famous DPG records forum DPG records with all the emojis everybody was calling Daz a crackhead and infamous emojis yeah the little emojis, fingers and- yep guns and Mm -hmm. all that good shit yeah the little smiley faces blasting yeah (laughs) and when when dads would post and he would use one it was hilarious hell yeah (laughs) bitch ass niggas um let's see here try to pull up the art real quick there we go oh it's not there let's try this one not there ah. all right so they don't have it up on discogs but do you remember what it was like in inside that cover i i, I want I to think... say that he had an advertisement for some other shit he was doing like he was kind of trying to come up with his own record label at some point wasn't he and he had like right. a logo he had like a few different yeah, logos i think it was the dude with the eyes and the bandana or something yeah he had that one there wasn't much to the insert from what I remember. I think it was just a one single page insert. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. So the CD, yep, I remember the CD was blue. And uh, Daz is in a suit, a blue suit, pointing a gun and uh, looking all stink face like. Yeah. But uh, there's his logo, you know, the uh, the eyes with the bandana throwing up the... I don't know what is that. I have no idea, but I oh, think yeah. that's a a gang sign. Don't know what gang it represents, but Crip, probably Crip. Dog pound gangsta Crip. That or East Side? Who knows? Oh yeah, it could be East Side. But uh, yeah, I mean the CD insert, not bad, or the CD itself, but the insert we got the back, same picture that's on the CD. Yeah. Same logo. Nothing too crazy. And I think this might have been the advertisement in there. The uh, new Daz album. and Corrupt, coming mm. soon, 2001. Yeah. Um, oh, you got the Booyah oh. Tribe guys back there. I don't know if there's Nate Dog. Is that Exhibit? Maybe it is. It's a hell of a party. Yeah. If I took a closer look, probably recognize some more people. Yeah. But uh, But yeah, man. Uh, so not too much with the album insert, um, 
but uh, this would have been Daz's second album, right? He dropped one solo on Death Row, Retaliation, Revenge, and Get Back. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of info on this album itself as to who produced it, when the songs were recorded and all that, but, you know, I get the feeling a lot of this was recorded at Death Row, and Daz probably just took his masters and... Mm -hmm. went and put it out all by himself which i think lends to the quality of the mastering you know not being top notch yeah and i don't know when you have the masters don't you have like don't you have like all the the, the layers the and layers the, and the sounds yeah. and everything mm -hmm. yeah i don't know like i mean he would have been able to get it mastered but i don't know what it was like back then you know because yeah. now we have the software i mean you and i could master an album if we wanted yeah. Um, back then, I think they depended on music engineers or studios to do it for him. I wonder if he was in a rush just to get it out or he was worried about lawyers. And really, did it come out officially like in the stores or was it just like an online thing? Hmm, that's a good question, man. I, I, I just remember it feeling like it was bootleg, you yeah. know, underground. I don't remember how I got my hands on it. I don't know if it was through the website or it if it was at a store. It was probably dpgrecords.com, yeah. I bet. I know I've gotten a few things from DPG Records. This so. is probably one of them. I don't remember this one coming from the store. Right. I remember some of the songs leaking first um, on the web. Mm -hmm. Do you remember which ones? Um, Raw. Raw, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the other ones, but I just remember being impressed with Raw yeah. when that came out. And when the whole CD came out, I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that track later, but yeah, that's definitely one of the standouts there, and for that one to be leaked, I was, mm -hmm. I know, I, if I was Daz, I'd be a little disappointed, but uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. The internet's been leaking shit for years. Yeah, it was more of a drip back then. Though. Right, right. Now it's like <laughs> you can get albums. Early. You can get an album in a minute, if that you know. Right. But everybody, not everybody, had the web or even phones. Right. So a leak wasn't as big of a deal it was more for like bootleggers you know benefiting off of a, a leak burning it burning that shit on cd and selling it themselves i guess i right. never seen that that shit happen but i could see it happening yeah i mean i think i don't know maybe go to a swap meet or a flea market yeah right and there find it some something like that <clears throat> but yeah i mean uh i guess as far as music production i'm assuming daz took care of most of it uh, I think Superfly has something to do with a couple songs. And then if I remember right, if I got to look. Um, was there a Mike Dean track on here? N I don't think so. There was a, a producer E3 that does work for Method Man. Hmm. Um, that was all I could find. Hmm. Let's see here. So there's a little bit more information about uh, these tracks on Genius. So let's see, written by Badass and Daz, and then it's got some sample information. But uh, yeah, not a lot of producer credits, so I'm going to assume that Daz did most of it. It sounds a lot like Daz. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, man. Um, Yeah, it was an interesting time back in the 2000 era, you know, internet and DPG records and just Daz and just getting our hands on this CD that felt bootleggy. Um, this wasn't long after Pac passed away, so there was a lot of, you know, bootleg Pac going around. Right. It was a strange time, you know, Death Row was dying. Uh, I think Suge, I'm not sure if Suge was free or not at this point, but um, things started happening in, in the West Coast, um, Death Row not really being in charge anymore, kind of left uh, kind of left a, a blank presence there for a while, and you weren't really sure how people felt about Death Row, like Daz leaving and stuff. Right. Although he would put things out every now and then about fuck Death Row, you know, did, shit like that. Did Daz have a beef with Snoop back then? I don't remember. I'm trying to remember. Like, there was so much beef between Daz and Snoop and Corrupt. And, you know, Snoop was cool with one of them and not the other for a while. And I don't remember. I don't know. I'm pretty sure Snoop would have been cool with Daz. If anything, he would beef with Corrupt, maybe, since they're not related and Corrupt 
kind of stayed at death row or went back to death row. Um, but I, it was hard for me to keep track of all the people Daz hated. Right, <laughs> right. Because, I mean, it was so wild out there. Like, he would diss uh, Benzino, or uh, he would also diss, was it the, the Buya, Buya tribe? The, no, the... Uh, he dissed Ja Rule back then. He did diss Ja Rule. Um, I thought he might have dissed those Samoan gangsters once. Yeah, the Bu- Buya tribe. That's, the that's Buya who it tribe. is, yeah. Yeah, um, but who knows? You know, no, nobody really knows what what he really means. Oh, it looks like Death Row put out Snoop Dogg's Dead Man Walking that year. Oh, okay. Um, I was just kind of looking over what came out in two thousand. Um, mm. Snoop dropped the Last Meal. Exhibit dropped Re- uh, Restless. Um, the Last Meal, huh? Man, I can't believe yeah. that. And Eight Ball and MJG did Space Age Forever. Man, we still had malls back then. Yeah. See, I remember getting Don Cisco, the the Mexican dude, mm-hmm. um, from the store. And you know, it was weird. I saw that they came out the same day. Tila came out. Let's see that year. Yep. The world ain't enough. That's crazy. Shine. Shine. Hell of a year, man. Yeah. But, yeah, not too bad, man. Um, what else? Cool Keith? I don't remember Matthew. I don't remember hearing about that album. Yeah, I'm a, one of those uh, Cool Keith, um, I don't know, experimental albums. Ah, uh, okay. You know. uh, MC8, In My Neighborhood. That's dope. That was a who banging record. Was that the second one? Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. That's cool. But, yeah, man. Um not a bad year. I, I mean, as far as what I listen to, there's not yeah. a whole lot that came out. Hey, check it out there. There's a Trick Daddy Book of Thugs. Book of Thugs. That must have been his second record, wasn't it? Like, wasn't his first one like www.thugs.com or something like that? I think like it that? was something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, man, that guy was this grimy, is, man. Just well, this grimy. is like the, the Y2K shit, right? Yeah. So, yeah, the www.com thing was something that a lot of people were... Or embracing kill it taste snake eyes click on that man was that a, a west coast mafia release no link bastards of course not hmm i gotta look up that record yeah Damn, bone thugs resurrection came out that year too I, yeah i remember that cd man it was kind of hard to get into bone after they left ruthless and that was still ruthless though was that still ruthless yeah, yeah i remember Bone Thugs Resurrection was the... Was this still DJ Unique? It was more LT Hutton. Okay, yeah. I kind of... I got to give that one another listen, you know, because yeah. I bet if I go back to it, I probably appreciate it a little bit more. I, I give it a listen about once a year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got some, some of my favorite tracks on there from Bone. Ice Cube did War and Peace Volume 2. Oh, yeah, the purple one. Yeah. Crazy. Anyways, that's, uh, that was the year that the Raw came out, man. Lots of competition there. Some some decent records, mm-hmm. you know. Definitely uh, polished records. A lot of polished yeah, records, man. Yeah, a lot of these are... Hella polished. Mastered. Yeah. But right on, man. Uh, any other thoughts before we get started on the album? No, man, let's do it. Let's just do it. Cool. So we start off with Super Cuz. Right, right. Just an intro. I think it's funny, though. Like, I don't skip it. Yeah. I kind of like it. Well, it's one of those ones that's hard to skip because it's so short. By the time you start thinking about skipping it, it's already over. Yeah. But, But yeah, interested to find out who that person is. Yeah. And then... A second track. Street Gangs. Street Gangs, which, I mean, I would have just put the two together if I was Daz. Just make it a one-track deal, but... Yeah. I, I kind of like it. the beat on Street Gangs and wish maybe it was a song. Yeah. A real one. But, um, you know, whatever. I guess it's just getting us warmed up for the rest of the record. So the actual official first track, then, is track number three. Right. What you talking about? What do you think about that track? 
Well, I think he uh, he hit a home run here. I think this is uh, a great way to start the album off. Yeah, um, it's dope. Upbeat, good flow, good track, and um, it's got a cool hook. Got a cool hook, and I guess it has a sample from West Side Connection. Um, I can't I can't catch it though. I don't hear it. All the critics in New York. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So I, to me, it's just the bass line that's part part of the bass line. Yeah. But not the whole thing. But I could be wrong. I don't know. It's a cool track. I like the bass, man. Yeah, I gave Some I gave this jazz. one a pretty high score. Yeah. I ended up giving this one a, a nine, actually. A nine? Let's yeah. see. What did I give this one? I gave this track an eight. Nice. I might be a little bit of a Daz Nut writer, so my scores might be inflated. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a good song, though. I could see. I could see why it would get a nine. And it was one of the ones that's more polished. I mean... As yeah, we go through the album, we're going to hear some that don't sound as polished. Yeah, for sure. So this one started off... I mean, this song is one of the more polished ones. So, um, Next track we got, This Is Not Over Till We Say So. Mm-hmm. And, you know, slows down a little bit here. We get off to a great start with what you're talking about. And then, like, the beat kind of slows down. And, you know, I don't have anything... Uh, bad to say about the the lyrics or the the track itself but like it's hard to get into it with the way he did the hook um and then i don't know this one i feel like if it was placed somewhere else it might have hit different but yeah i unfortunately i didn't score this one too high i was kind of going back and forth between a six and a seven and i ended up i don't know i'll give it a six and a half i like this song I gave this one an eight. It's one of my favorites. Nice. I don't know why I can't put my finger on it. You know. Yeah. The placement. Yeah, maybe. Um, like I, I get it. The CD's still trying to find its footing at this point. Right. And it's hard, because we have the two, two intros, one cool song, and then we get this song. Right. You know. So the momentum is like shifted. Right, like it, the upbeat, it, the beat came down as far as like yeah. the, the mood, so it's a little more serious. Um, but yeah, like it, it's just hard to get into it because I I think it's the hook, but yeah, I, I get it as a track. I I dig it. All right, cool. So we agree to disagree. Right on this track, it happens. Next track we got then one nine nine. Mm-hmm. Little C style in the house. Yeah. And we learned that Big C Style and Lil C Style are, are the, the same, same person. Same fucking people, dude. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought Big C Style was his big brother. Dude, me too. I mean, and, and I and I remember thinking they sound the same. Well, like, you would hear it in the Dog Pound lyrics all the time, the homie Big C Style, or you'd hear Lil C Style. Yeah. So you would always think they were different people, but hey, another code crack. Twenty years 20 later. Twenty years later, man. <laughs> What'd you score this track? I gave this one. See, I, I wrote down seven and eight because I wasn't sure where to put it. So I'm going to give it a seven and a half. Yeah. I gave the track a seven. You know, I, I think it's dope to hear a little C style. Mm -hmm. He's got a cool flow. You know, he, he never really strays too far from his character. Right. So he's always held on to that mystique of the LBC gangsta that just hangs out in the back. Right, right. He's cool. Yeah, so. good flow. Good, good verse on here, too. Oh, yeah, you know? for sure. And uh, I don't know. He reminds me of Charlie Murphy for some reason. Oh, yeah? Just like, he's like the grimy, the grimy guy. Like, kind of uh, like how Charlie was to Eddie. He was kind of like the, you know, the, the not the famous one, but he was still the funny one, you know? Yeah, a little bit, huh? Little C Style is kind of like behind the scenes, a little bit like that. We had him on child support on Retaliation Revenge, remember? Yeah. He's like, oh, do yep. gangsters get hit with child support? Yep, that's true. Uh, yeah, they do. Lil C Styles even on Daz's or on the new Dog Pound album that came out earlier this year. That's cool. He's doing his thing, man. Yeah. He's doing his thing. All right, next track. Who's knocking at my door? Who's knocking at my door? Yeah. So this has got a cool beat. I dig it. Um It's kind of an interesting I don't know if you want to call it a story, but it's interesting to listen to. You know, right. the, the song, how they talk about, 
you know, being a drug dealer and it's stressful to get a knock on your door. Dude, yeah. I couldn't even imagine like the anxiety. I couldn't deal with it, you know, and and growing up I remember visiting a few places that were like that, you know, where yeah. you'd go visit the homie and they were doing something on the side and you'd be chilling and just multiple people knocking on the door, doing an exchange. This is bullshit. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> like it wasn't like a high like big pounds of coke or anything either. Right, right. Know? No, it was stupid wasn't. kid shit, you know. Yeah, stupid kid shit. I mean it yeah. was weed, but you know, it's like It was funny. It I can relate it a little bit. I'm sure yeah. this this track was more of a larger scale. Oh yeah, but it does make you think back then, like how stupid were we? Like oh, yeah. or how stupid was the law back then even, you know? Right. Having kids all nervous over marijuana, you know, right. and everything. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. Uh, I ended up scoring this one. See, I had it between a seven and an eight. Oh, no, yeah. my bad. I gave it a nine. I'm looking at the wrong track. Um, I gave this one a nine. I dig the beat. The flow's good. And I like the, the topic. It's interesting. Not a lot of people rap about that. No, it's interesting. I still gave it a seven. Yeah. But I, I appreciate it, you know. I nice. don't really skip it. Yeah, I bump it. I fucks with it. Yeah, that's cool. All right, next track then, When You Least Expected It. Yeah. So, When You Least Expect It, some more gangster shit, just some shoot 'em up shit. Yeah. Um, dope beat, dope lyrics. This was a 10 on my list. Yeah, I like the beat. I think Daz is cool on here, the way he flows and everything. It probably deserves a 10. I gave it a 9. Nice. But I put a star next to it. It's like, this is one of my favorites. Nice. It's a dope track, man. Can't go wrong with it. I feel like it was made in the um, Retaliation Revenge era. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And maybe it was not completed, you know, or polished up all the way. Right. But I could see cool. that. And, you know, that album and this album are only a year apart. And I know, it's crazy. I don't, I don't know the time span that all the songs were worked on, so it could have been maybe two or three years that all this stuff was made in. But, but yeah, I hear that, too, with the flow. It's cool. This one gets a thumbs up, then, for show. Sure. Next track, then, What It Is. Nephew. What um, It Is. This one, this one's a skipper for me. The, yeah. the hook is... I don't like the hook, that dude's voice with the uh, whatever he's doing in the background. Uh, I gave this one a six. I think that might be the lowest score I've ever gave a song. And it's probably not fair to Daz, but... Uh, it does deserve got, a six, though. He's gotten some really highs. He's got some highs and some lows on this album, but this is one of the lows. Yeah. It's boring. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure Daz was done with it. But, you know, it did come out. Mm -hmm. So. I agree. It, it probably is unfinished. But, you know, he put it on there. So we're reviewing it. Next track, then. I'd rather lie to ya. Yeah, another dope one. Yeah, this one's pretty dope. Uh, Daz and Corrupt. Beats dope. Hook's pretty cool. I like the hook. Um. I scored it an eight or a nine, but listening to it again and just kind of seeing like, I don't know, I'll probably give it a nine. I'm yeah. tempted to give it a 10, but I'll stick to my guns on what I rated it and go with the nine. Yeah, I give it an eight. I actually had it at seven, but today it changed to eight. Yeah. So some of these grow on me, mm -hmm. I think. Hey, whatever. Well, Nothing I, mean, I write is set in stone. Right. All of this is pliable you know it's it moves yeah. and you know that's the beauty about this podcast is i mean we hear the album a couple of times and we get to know it a little better yeah like um you know the nas shit i mean that took a while for me to grow on me but oh, yeah, i appreciate sure. those albums but but yeah it's yeah. the beauty yeah and i never listened to this record much ever like i said just a couple songs right popped out for my playlist but hearing it all in a contextual manner in mm -hmm. order and studying it is dope. Next track then, On the Grind. Uh, 
on the grind of his kind of the mood changes for this beat you know it's a little more chill but upbeat at the same time yeah it's pretty chill and upbeat it's um, one of those california tracks you know right i appreciate it it has dog pound written all over it even though it was produced by e3 you know if i wouldn't yeah. have read that i would have assumed it was a daz track me too it sounds like a daz track right um i gave this one a 10 yeah um the flow is a little different because we don't really well up until this point we didn't hear him rap fast very often not really not that often and for this song i feel like they both nailed it yeah yeah crow comes correct on here daz does pretty good of course um what can i say man it just reminds me of cruising around california mm-hmm. and the hot weather you know yeah a day in the life out there hustling and grinding man mm-hmm. it's dope what did you end up rating that one again? I gave it an eight. An eight, nice. Next, we have an interlude here. Yes. If you want this pussy. It's very weird. Daz can get really weird with the sexual content sometimes. Yeah. It's like that bomb ass pussy song on uh, dog food. That one's kind of weird too. It's just awkward, Daz. Like, you need to call Luke and tell you how it's done. Exactly. It's funny, though. Whatever, I don't score but, it. But, you know, it, it's something that from this era, I think every rapper had, like, a sexually explicit song on their album at least one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, true. It's funny. So we have the, the track, Your Girlfriend 2. Oh, yes. And um, Daz is forcing me to compare this to part one, which is unfair to the track. Um, So we all know that part one was on Streets as a Mother. I mean, that was a classic. Um, Super classic. The beat was insane. Corrupt's flow was crazy. Uh, Yeah. But bringing it back to this, um, the beat doesn't compare. The lyrics don't compare. And unfortunately, he's forcing me to compare it to that track. Um, I tried to listen to it unbiasedly. I ended up giving this one like a seven. Yeah, I gave it a six. Part two to such a classic song. Ouch. Yeah. Um, This is more like part four, you know? Right. Like it should be like part four. Usually they get a little bit worse. Right. That or just give it a different name altogether, you know? And yeah, to tell you, know. you the truth, the hook's not that good either. I don't think we touched on this during the podcast, but it just sounds a little forced. I don't think Daz got the time that he wanted or needed for this song to really polish it. And that's right. probably the case for a lot of these songs. Like, who knows no, where his right. equipment was even at right. at this point. You know, he just took his masters from Death Row probably. Mm-hmm. Maybe didn't have any equipment. Might not have. He might have had to wing it on a whatever computer and whatever he managed to get his hands on. You know, you yeah, gotta you gotta think, really right? He was at Death Row Records yeah. with elaborate studios and now he's doing shit out of his basement or what whatever yeah. you would say. So who knows? Who knows what things look like? But this is the like this is the transition record. Right. Like, basically you're around the, you're on your own now. Right. Motherfucker. Yeah, I, that's a good way to put it, the transition record. This is just keeping your name out there while you're getting your shit together. Yeah. All right, the next track, the title track, Raw. Raw. So this, the title track, um, man. Rossetti and Willing. Rossetti and Willing. We figured out what Raw means. Yeah, such a dope track, for. too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, standout track. This one by far exceeds the others and you know i gave it a 10 and i almost feel bad that i gave it a 10 because i have other songs as 10s i'm like this one should be an 11 but um can't really do that but dope track man it, it stands the test of time still dope now yeah no i agree it does stand the test of time it's one of those tracks you can put on a playlist today and just be like this track is still so fucking dope yep it will probably never stop being dope. It's one of Daz's best tracks ever. 
The beat is crazy. You know, it's gangsta as hell. Corrupt on here. You know, they're both going back and forth. Right. Classic DPG style. And they're, uh, you know, they're flipping their words, man. Yeah. You know, it's so cool. You know, it makes you feel it up and, Yeah, exactly, man. It makes you want to learn the lyrics. Oh, yeah, and, totally. And be able to recite it. The raw. Yep. It's such a dope track, though. So, and Corrupt, Daz does a great job on here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he doesn't have to be as lyrically as, I don't know, genius as Corrupt is. If you consider Corrupt that, you know, he doesn't have to be on Corrupt's level, in other words. He yeah. brings a lot of charisma. Daz is kind of like the says. color commentator mm -hmm. of the group. You know, he's got he's, charisma. He's got personality. Yep. So, he did great on here. Yeah, it's a dope track. Dope track gets a thumbs up. All right, next track then. It's all about that money. Yeah. This track I thought was dope too. This one um, also kind of sets itself apart from the others just because of how well mastered it is. This one's polished. Yeah. And. This one also came out on the Dog Pound 2002. Yeah. So this could have been something that was already meant for the next project that just didn't get put on Revenge, Retaliation, and Get Back, but was going to make it to something else. Um, but yeah, it sounds great compared to the rest. But this one I gave a 10. Yeah, I like this song. Um, I've heard this song many times in my life. Mm -hmm. um, it makes your playlists anyways. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty familiar with it. I didn't really know that it was on two records, but you know I do remember hearing it a lot, mm -hmm. and I never hated the song. It's pretty dope. You know, I gave it an eight. It's a you know it's a dope track. The beat has an eerie feeling. You know, it like makes you feel like you're outside in the dark and some shit's gonna go down, but you're out yeah. there making money. Like, no, yeah, and you know, it can't be under stated it shouldn't be understated how much das can make the mood without lyrics but mm -hmm. with his beat mm -hmm. like he's going for a story and his work on the drums back there and the keyboard always set the tone mm -hmm. you know it, it's crazy we take it for granted because we've grown up with it but yeah it's cool it's a, it's such a skill you know and on the hook you can hear how it's mastered. Everything's like layered, harmonized, and all of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, good yeah, shit. I like Daz's flow on here too, especially that second verse when he jumps in. Like mm -hmm. $500,000 homes and mobile phones. Yeah. The way he navigates around a beat with his words is, it's it's good. He, to be, I mean, he's making his own music, you know? So yeah. that's pretty badass that he can do that. He's probably one of the best flows in the game. Yeah, for sure. All right, next track, Moving Around, featuring Slip Capone. Yeah, so so we had a couple of 10s, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and now we get Moving Around, which is cool, but you got a pretty big bar set to come after that. Yeah. Um, moving Around, I like the beat, Slip Capone. Slip Capone does a good job on his verse. Um but still leaves me with something to be desired here. So I ended up scoring this one a seven. I gave it an eight. I like the beat. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with it. Like as simple as it is. And I don't know if it's unexciting or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a chill track for yeah. me. You know, it's just like, yeah, I like this track. Yeah. I think part of it too for me is that I've listened to a lot of Daz and he's got a lot of tens in his catalog in my yeah. opinion. So when I hear something like this, it's like I know that it could be done better. But I guess in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's it's a good track. It's just sure. his catalog is just so good. It's one, like when you hear something like this, it it almost bums me out, but it's good that. shit. Yeah, I could get that. And maybe I didn't like this song back in the day. I probably mm -hmm. didn't, you know? Yeah. I was probably like, But this, one, this one's a little more grimy and underground. Yeah. I appreciate it today. I don't know why. I don't know about the hook. It's not that great. Right. But I do like, uh, you know, this slip guy. Mm -hmm. Does a pretty good job, though. 
sometimes I feel like he should come up for air. Yeah. You know? Like he comes um comes across as a try hard. It not too bad, but you know, I kind of want him to like relax just a little bit. Yeah, on maybe verse. add a little air in between his verses. Yeah, or but his he, lines. he's got a lot of skill, man. Like it's crazy how he can just like keep going. You know? No, you're right. Sometimes it sounds like he's not taking a breath. Yeah. It it's a lot to uh kind of I don't know, digest in your brain. Well when you're trying to hear what he's saying, it's like fuck, your brain's gotta wake up. <laughs> yeah, it's cool though. Yeah, I could see why this isn't like the favorite song, but it is what it is. All right, you ain't knowing. Yeah, you ain't knowing. Um, this was another standout for me. You got Trey D on there. Yeah. He's got a verse on there and Trey D and Daz. I mean, that's usually a recipe for success there. Yeah, those um, guys do great together. But I like the beat. This is a little simpler, but he's got that synthesizer in the back. It adds a little eerie element to it. Yeah, I like it. But yeah, I gave this one... Where'd it go? A nine. Nice. I gave it a seven. Mm. I mean, I like the song, but I guess in the scheme of other tracks that I gave eights to, I don't find it as good as those. Yeah. But I do love hearing me some Trey D, you know? Right. Especially on a Daz beat. You know, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. But it's a pretty simple beat, you know? Yeah. It's nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. You got that little eerie synthesizer, and then, what is that, a xylophone that they're hitting in the yeah, back maybe. there? It's cool. It's pretty yeah. creative. All right, next track we got here, Agony. Yeah, Agony I didn't care for. You know, I, it's Latoya Williams, and I don't have anything against her, but this is rap, man. Yeah, I hate to even give it a score, but geez. Like, I hate yeah. to, like, I just want to, like, yank it out of I'm the not Exactly. Like, 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 I don't want to diss count. her. I actually put N.A. on my shit. I didn't even score it. Yeah. That's probably a good idea. N.A. <laughs> so next track then, Feel Good. Feel Good. So we got her back on Feel Good. And yeah, this got, is a little toy we like. Right. right here. So I like when you're lacing the songs with your vocals and the hooks. Yeah. I'm not really into the solo stuff, but Feel Good's upbeat, almost like a California love type of anthem, mm -hmm. almost. But um, I, I like this one. This one I used to bump a lot. Yeah. Um, I gave this one a nine. Yeah, me too. I gave it a nine. It sounds like a good old Cali hit. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the type of tracks that Daz is just a master of producing. Right. Are these California anthem tracks yeah. that can just be played and I'm sure Julio G probably had this on rotation when it dropped. Yeah. All those California radio station DJs. Yeah. It's a it's a Kelly song, man. It's dope. All right, next track then, My System. Toot, 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 toot. Yeah. So, man, I used to love this song back in the day, but I used to have a system in the car. And I think part of what stood stood out to me was just how hard it hit. Yeah. Um but listening to it again now, I still like it, but my appreciation's gone down a little bit. I gave it in between a 7 and an 8, so I think for this track, I'm going to stick with the 7. That's so weird, man. I gave this one a 10. Damn. And I gave it a star. And I used to not like this song. Right. Back in the day when you really liked this song. Yeah. And now I really like this song. That's that's and you kind of don't like the song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like we traded you know, spots on it. It's like if if I was mm. doing a Daz playlist again, I probably would leave it off. Yeah, I think the song is a lot of fun. It I is. Like the, I like corrupt on it, man. He just kills it. You know. Yeah, he rides that beat really good. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good elements to it. It just for whatever reason, it for me, it just didn't hit the same. Maybe because I'm a corrupt mark now, you know. Right. Like, the actress, she's okay. I like what she did on here. She held her own. Yeah. I don't think she's done anything else after this, but I could be wrong. Not anything on that I listen to anyway. I've never heard her. I've never heard her 
that name in my life. So, interesting song. Yep, yep. Pretty cool. Well, I guess we traded places on that one. Yeah, crazy. Next track then, The Backstabbers. Yeah, Backstabbers. Yeah. She's got a little little intro here. What's up? What's up? No. <laughs> this is dope, man. I like the intro. It's crazy. Yeah. Um it's cool. It's cool hearing them talk to each other on the phone, just yeah, bullshit. You it know? is. And I, Daz must be a nut like that all the time. Like, where are you at? Open you if you let me. Like, fucking guy's high. Like, fucking again. dude. Of course he would say something like that. Yeah. But it's fucking funny. Um, yeah, it is funny. But now we're, we're, we're at the... We've got the music playing. We've got Backstabbers playing. Um, yeah. And to me, this gave me the vibe of a single... Like, I think this was meant to be a single on Death Row at some point. Yeah. You got Mark Morrison on here who did Return of the Mac, which was a number one hit back in the 90s. Um, And you got a good beat. It's polished. Mark Morrison kills it. Daz kills it. Trey D kills it. Yeah. It's good shit. I didn't give it a 10, but I appreciate, you know, the quality. Uh, Good enough for a radio single. So I gave it a 9. Yeah, you know, I gave it an eight, but I gave it a star. Yeah. You know? Isn't that weird? It's like, it's one of my favorite tracks on here. Right. It takes me back to the 90s, you know? Mm-hmm. There's some uh, uh, nostalgia that goes with it. Right. For some reason, it hits, you know? I can appreciate it. Yeah, me too. I, I would say I appreciate it more now than I did back then. Yeah, me too. Because I'm old. Like, <laughs> take me back to the <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bobby Brown days and yeah, Paul Abdul. The good shit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's what it reminds me of, man. Some flat tops and right, you know, yeah, high, flat tops and fades. Yeah, man, the starter the, jackets or the high top, the high flat top. That's right, man. It's oh, cool, yeah. man. It's a cool track. So that's a good way to end it. End the the CD, really. I mean, as the last song. I mean, right. we, we got the next track, which is a skit. The outro, super cuz. It's funny. It reminds me of, you know, the phone calls Biggie used to get right. on his CDs. Like, he'd be, be like, I'm eat a, a dick. Yep. You know? I'm kill you. I'm gonna kill, kill you, you, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> it's Word. funny. It's in the same vein, I think, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I get it. I could do with or without those skits, but you started with one and you ended with one. I don't mind it. Yeah. Pretty dope. It's dope. So there you have it, man. Each track, one by one. Yeah. If you had to pick three, which ones would you pick? So, all right, let me look here. The three may have changed. Yeah. So, when you least expect it, or expected it, I got that one on here. Raw, of course. Yeah. And then, um, God, it's going to be a tough one, but I'm going to have to go ahead and go with... uh, my system. My system. That's dope. Yeah, I gave that one a star and a ten. But it's the, I'm, I like to call my system the, uh, the comeback song of the year. Comeback song of the year. Or, nice. Yeah, isn't that what they do with football players that, yeah, that are shitty and come back or something or hurt? I don't know. Yeah. Comeback yeah. player of the year, comeback track of the year or or of the last two decades. Um, I went with what you're talking about and we both picked raw and backstabbers. Nice. I, so, I like that selection too. Yeah. Man. Those are good songs. So all in all, man, I think it's a good album. It's not yeah. Daz's most polished work, but it's some of his best work. You know, you get a lot of really good tracks in there. Um, and you got a little bit of filler in there, but I mean, all in all, definitely worth a listen. Yeah, I agree. Worth a listen. Um, I don't know. I listened to it more than once, and I liked it better each time. Yeah. You know, I started to understand uh, the concepts behind a lot of his tracks here. Um, I don't know why, but I just didn't get it at first. Mm -hmm. Like, I liked what I liked from it back in the day, and I pulled it out, and I didn't give them any other thought. Right. You know, the CD in its entirety. 
I don't think I even owned it, but it, even when it was around on Spotify, as it still is, you know, I still like played it and I was like, nah, I'm just going to pick what I like. You right, know, I wasn't right. patient enough to sit through the whole thing. I just like picked what I like, but listening to it again or as a whole for the first time from start to finish, first time in a long time, mm -hmm. you know, there is a different appreciation I have for the record. Um, I, I understand, you know, it's kind of like that transition record, like you're escaping death row and you're on your own. Right. Good luck. Here's what I got, you know? So Took I don't what know. You could and you put it out. Yeah. And I don't know what his situation was like when it came out, but you know, a lot of it just still sounds unfinished, a little underground and grimy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I dig it, you know. I dig that feel sometimes, that sound. Right. It's cool. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we love underground shit. Yeah. I mean, For show. Sure. What's the crown jewel on this record? Oh, the crown jewel? I think yeah. that's easy. To me, it's raw. Yeah, Rossetti and Willing. Yeah, Rossetti and Willing. You know, that's by far the standout track, the, the crown jewel. Yeah, um, it's light years ahead of not just like this CD, but mm -hmm. a lot of his work. Yeah, the the projects that came out after this, even Dog Pound projects. I mean, it anything that Daz and Corrupt did, I would be hard pressed to find another track that is that good. I mean, there's some good ones, you know, like Streets of the Mother. That's yeah, a great sure. track, mm -hmm. but like, I mean, Raw is just on another level. Yeah, Raw is gangsta as hell. It's a lot of fun. It's light years. It's it's a timeless classic. Right. One thing I thought about the CD is that it it sounded old. Like some of the songs still yeah. sound they sound dated, mm -hmm. a little old, but raw is timeless. I think um, it doesn't sound old today. And there's nothing wrong with sounding old. If, no. If it's old, it's old. You know. Right. And you can appreciate it still. Um, and but I think a lot of that goes to like he didn't get to finish everything. You yeah, know, a lot of it he just had to put out the way it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, how do you score it on a scale of one to ten? Um, I probably give it a really strong eight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's he's got some sixes or a six, and he's got a couple of sevens in here. Like, I like to score it higher, but you got agony on there, and I didn't want to count that against him either, but. Um, I'm going to roll with an eight. I think eight's a good score. Yeah, I gave it an eight. It wasn't like a strong eight. It yeah. was like a, hmm, I just can't, can't make it, I can't make it lower. Right. I can't hold it against him what I want to because the great tracks are so much overpowering. Yeah. And you know, they're I so think good. That, that was, that was kind of part of what worked against him too. Yeah. But I give it an eight. I give it eight bumping systems. Nice. Eight bumping systems. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Dope track. Hell yeah. Hey. Thanks for the recommendation. Oh, Dope hell yeah, CD. man. Hell yeah. Uh, took me a while to figure it out, but... Yeah. As soon as I came across it, you know, I, it's hard for me to pick these out. Usually I'll just go to Spotify and every song that I like, I just put that on random and try to yeah. pick an album out from there. And uh, it took me a few days to find it, but I came across Raw and I was like, boom, that's the one. Raw. Dope, dope CD, man. Check it out on Spotify or whatever. I think we'll head to commercial. Yeah. Check us out at rapthrowback.com. Leave us a message, even a voicemail. We'll slap you on Ooh, the show. Hit us with a voicemail, man. No I'm, doubt, I want to hear one. I know, man. Good or bad. I'm Good or bad. Got a YouTube channel. Always getting comments on there. They're so random, but thank you for them. Hell yeah. <laughs> They're always like, <laughs> that quality video was shit. Or Raiders. Like, yeah. That's funny. Anyways, oh, yeah. keep it up, man. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Hit us up there, you know, Spotify, you know, we can be found there. iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, all that shit, wherever you want to find your podcast. So hit us up and uh, we'll be back. Hell yeah. This is your boy Megatron signing out. This is your boy Soundwave signing out. Peace. Peace.